Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. So today we're going to be going through a Jimmy Carter versus George H.W. Bush election on the 2020 electoral map. So the way I'm going to be doing this is mainly because I do not know either of these candidates too well. Obviously, both of them are former presidents, but I don't know them t entirely in terms of their po political stances. And <clears throat> I guess it could be just uh, me being uneducated about historical politicians, but pretty much I only cover the modern political stage. I mean, I can tell you the candidates and like the Missouri Senate race, but I can't tell you uh, the exact thing that's happened in the 76th presidential election race and then also 88. But uh, something to point out besides this video, we have 37 days away. We are 37 days away from the 2018 midterm elections. When I saw that, I've been referring to um, <clears throat> 44, 45 days in my other videos. Uh, in fact, yesterday I did that. And then I go here and then I realize I haven't checked 270 in a while. And then I see 37 days. So uh, a very long way away from the 2020 presidential election, 765 days, but my channel's been around longer than a year, and I've been <clears throat> and I've been covering the same elections for a very long time, so for over a year. Uh, so my voice may sound a little bit different, sick right now, um, it seems like everyone's sick, isn't it? Uh, but overall, we're going to go through this election, and again, the way I'm going to do this is based off the candidate that won the higher percentage in their election. So let's say, uh, that was a little confusing, let's say my home state of Maryland. If Jimmy Carter won with 51% of the vote and George H.W. Bush won with 53% of the vote, then that state goes to Bush because I'm not going to really do a prediction. I did want to go into the whole in-depth about appealing to progressives, blue dogs, uh, Bush with uh, different types of Republicans. But really, um, I have an AP Gov test tomorrow, which is pretty fun. Uh, not really, though. Uh, so I don't have a lot of time to do that. But um, again... Going through this map, it's going to be very interesting looking at some of these results, considering that, that the maps have definitely changed. I look at some exit poll, not really exit poll data, just based off uh, demographic data. 22% of Democrats voted for Ford in 76. 77% voted for Carter. Now, that may seem like, yes, he won with an overwhelming majority, but I believe 9 or 8% of Republicans voted for Carter. The reason why Carter won was because he swept the South, and if you look at a number of those close races, a lot more closer races than what we saw in the 2016 presidential election. So either we're getting more partisan, or uh, these elections were just intensely close. So when it comes down to it, this election is uh, probably not going to come out the way you might expect it. So I'm going to be using solid colors and then pure toss-up. Um, I'm only going to go through the pure toss-up races on the races that we are currently rating as toss-up states for the 2020 presidential election if they were toss-ups in 1976 and then 1988. I'm not going to cover them because, again, we're looking at the 2020 presidential election map. Nothing after that or nothing before it. So we'll start off in alphabetical order. We're going to go over to Alabama. That one pretty much is going to Bush. It did go to Carter in 76, but uh, <clears throat> for right now it goes to Bush in terms of who won the higher percentage. In Alaska, another Bush state, I'm pretty much just going to be rattling them off from this point. So if you want to skip ahead, uh, by all means, do that. Uh, Arizona, we'll come back to. That one is currently rated as a toss-up race uh, for the 2020 presidential election, but Arkansas actually goes to Jimmy Carter. So that's our first blip of blue in the true uh, south. In California, that one goes to Bush. So that is not a race that is considered contested, but it is going to Bush. So seeing a red California is something that we haven't seen in a very long time, I believe. Actually, yeah, George H.W. Bush's election was the last time it went to the GOP. So very interesting numbers there. In terms of the presidential race, I know about Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, but go over to Connecticut. That one also goes to uh, George H.W. Bush. Very interesting results from the North compared to where the South was back in 76. And those are the, those are the main reasons why Carter's not winning there. Because if you take Obama's numbers in the North, obviously he would take California, Connecticut, and a number of other these states that are going to George H.W. Bush by the end of the video. In Delaware, that one is also going to Bush. Uh, not too surprising, though. And then, of course, the district goes towards uh, Jimmy Carter. Pretty much we can we finished off those states. We can go over to the state of Florida. Now, that one is currently rated as a toss-up in the modern, uh, I guess, political stage. So we'll come back to that one because we don't want to cover it just yet. Georgia is also rated as a toss-up. We will come back to that one. In Hawaii, that one goes to Jimmy Carter. So another win from another state. In the state of Idaho, that one does go to Bush, which is pretty much expected at this point. Indiana also goes to George H.W. Bush. Uh, and let's see, the state of Iowa is currently rated as a toss-up state, so we will come back to it. Uh, but Kansas, up across the red wall, now also red again. Kentucky, another red state, remaining in the Republican column. Louisiana, going to the Republican, George H.W. Bush. In the state of Maryland, that one goes towards Jimmy Carter. In the state of Maine, all of it, I'm just going to do all of it for right now, goes towards uh, Bush, which is pretty interesting. In the state of Massachusetts, that one goes to Jimmy Carter. Uh, not too unexpected. In the state of Michigan, that is a pure toss-up, so we will come back to it. In Minnesota, another toss-up. We're also going to come back to that state. Missouri goes to Bush, which is, not again, looking at a number of these states. They're not too unexpected, except for maybe California, Connecticut, Delaware, Maine. But for the rest of them, they're pretty much out where they should be. 
in the presidential election coming up uh, in 2020. The state of Montana, that one goes to George H.W. Bush, Nebraska to Bush. Uh, Nevada is a pure toss-up. We will come back to that one uh, so we can cover it. In New Hampshire, another toss-up state going into the yellow column. In New Jersey, that one goes to Bush. So another bigger state going into the Republican column. And Bush definitely up there compared to Carter. In New Mexico, that one is a uh, Bush state. It's not really a toss-up state for 2020. We know that state's probably going to go to the Democrats. For North Carolina, that is a toss-up state, so we will characterize it as a yellow state. And again, all of these go the same way they would have if it was just uh, characterized as a toss-up state from the beginning. So nothing really changes in the results. In the state of New York, that one goes to Jimmy Carter, so a big win for Carter compared to what he was losing to before. In North Dakota, that is an H.W. Bush state. In Ohio, a toss-up state, so we will return to it. Oklahoma, of course, going to Bush. Now, this is a weird one. Uh, Oregon goes to Jimmy Carter very narrowly. Um, I thought it would be like a blowout for Carter, but um, actually, no, sorry. Carter does not win in Oregon. Bush wins in Oregon, which is pretty interesting to me. Uh, that's what I meant to say. But um, overall, when we look at these results, again, you're seeing something very different than what we would normally see on a modern uh, political map. We are seeing states like Arkansas, blue, and states like California, red. So something, again, you would never, ever see before is something happening in this type of reality. So obviously, this election would never occur uh, in, I guess, what we would call our modern political era. But it's always interesting to see the speculation type results from... A number of these races, especially historical races, especially since this one was so hotly contested, uh, hotly uh, requested for multiple reasons, not just the constant uh, flood of comments that I receive about it, but it does seem like a pretty interesting thing. A former president versus a former president, of course, one of the five living presidents, five living, living presidents. Uh, I believe Obama, Trump. Oh, so five former, and then six uh, if you count the current one, Donald Trump. So right now, uh, if we look at the current electoral map jimmy carter has 63 electoral votes compared to hw bush at 167 so over 100 more for whatever reason that seems very weird to me uh but it's not too unexpected compared to where it could be um so oregon actually i just uh googled it hmm and i think oregon actually might be in the democratic column so i think i made a mistake there i rated it as a carter state but i know the 76 map did not have Oregon blue but it could be just the fact that Bush narrowly won it and that Carter had a high enough margin uh, to actually win in that race so we're going to keep Oregon blue because I'm going to trust my notes that I have right next to me uh, but I originally filled it in red um, but regardless if it was an arrow race it, okay so if Carter won it would be it would be expected a blowout which that's not what happened but if Bush won it would just be a red Oregon so that one definitely uh, says something about the state of Oregon. So Pennsylvania, that one we will go and put it in the toss-up column because we don't want to characterize that one just yet, but we will have a pretty surprising result there um, compared to what you might expect. In the state of Rhode Island, that one's not really a toss-up, but it is going to Carter. For some reason, the North seems very weird about a number of these states. Uh, in the state of South Carolina, that one goes to Bush. I mean, that's Bush territory, as was proclaimed in the 2016 Republican primaries. Then we saw what happened. In Tennessee, that one goes to Bush. Seems like the South is coming back. I mean, not many... A Democratic pick was in the South. Arkansas was the first one, probably going to be the only one. Over in Texas, that one does go to Bush. That's not really a toss-up race for 2020. And also, this is Bush's, uh, I guess you could say, home state. And then we go over to Utah. That one goes to George H.W. Bush, based off the numbers. Okay, so here's a weird one. Vermont. Now, when you think about Vermont, you think about Bernie Sanders, progressive, democratic socialism, the word Democrat. That's pretty much not what happened before 1992. Clinton winning there was a huge win for the Democrats. This was Vermont, quote-unquote, the most Republican state in the union. In terms of how many times they voted with a certain political party, the most Republican state is still, to this day, Vermont. That'll probably dissipate, especially with these new numbers uh, in the favor of the Democrats from the state of Vermont. But it's just very interesting to see how a state like, as Democratic as its own, to be the most Republican state in terms of prior voting history. So Vermont actually going to Bush because that was the last time it did go to the uh, a member of the GOP, and that was uh, right before Bill Clinton's election. So Vermont goes to Bush. Virginia is a toss-up race. We will come back to it. Uh, Washington goes to Bush. So that was the state that I confused with Oregon for a second. Uh, a red Washington. That's not something you might see in the um, modern political stance, but it's something that did happen uh, and something that is expected. So I believe Nebraska maybe just didn't fill in when I said that I was characterizing Nebraska. Uh, but right now we can go over to West Virginia. So that one's not really a toss-up. But it is going to Jimmy Carter. 
very interesting to see a state like West Virginia go to Jimmy Carter, considering that it's a pretty Republican state. But also, when we look at Jimmy Carter's results in West Virginia, it was pretty much a blowout for Jimmy Carter. Uh, almost all the Democrats win here. It was a huge win for the GOP in the year 2000 to take back West Virginia because it was so a solid Democratic state. Remember the 1992 and 1996 calls, if you've ever watched them, they say the solidly Democratic West Virginia going to Bill Clinton or however they characterize it. They always distinct it as a Democratic state, a solid Democratic state, not just a narrowly Democratic state. So that one flipping in the year 2000 was definitely a big hit to Democrats. If you look at the margins in the 2000 presidential election, it was closer than it is now, not a 30 point margin by any means, uh, but pretty much in the likely column. Over in the state of Wisconsin, that is a toss-up column, and we will goes into the toss-up column. We will come back to it. In the state of Wyoming, that one goes to Bush, and that pretty much characterizes all the races that I did fill in as uh, toss-up races, and then I forgot about the rest of these states uh, by accident, but overall, we just can keep going through the map. In South Dakota, that one goes to George H.W. Bush for obvious reasons. Uh, Colorado's a toss-up, so we will come back to it, and in the state of Illinois, that one goes to Bush. Now, that effectively makes him the next president of the United States at 270 electoral votes, defeating Jimmy Carter, but we still have a number of states to characterize that are currently rated in the toss-up column, totaling 183 electoral votes. And then the state of Mississippi puts uh, Bush over the 270 mark and puts him at 276 electoral votes. So now we can go back to the toss-up states, and this is pretty much going to say this is going to be a blowout for George H.W. Bush. Our, uh, Arizona goes to George H.W. Bush. In the state of Florida, that one also goes into the GOP column. Georgia goes to Jimmy Carter, which isn't too unexpected. I mean, it's Georgia, his home state. The margins there were phenomenal for him before, uh, and definitely. And he, I believe a couple days ago, he just campaigned for the Democratic nominee in the governor's race there, which probably isn't going to hurt her. Over in Iowa, that state actually goes to Jimmy Carter, so he's officially broken the 100 mark. Then we can go over to the state of Michigan, which goes to George H.W. Bush. But Minnesota, being as Democratic as a state of it is, as it is, goes to Jimmy Carter. In Nevada, that one overwhelmingly goes to Bush, along with the state of New Hampshire, only adding to his total at 342 electoral votes. In the state of Ohio, that one goes to George H.W. Bush. In the state of Pennsylvania, that one also goes to Bush. Uh, now that we can go down to the state of Virginia, that one goes to Bush as well. State of North Carolina, that one also goes to George H.W. Bush. Uh, always interesting seeing the results there. In Colorado, that one goes to George Bush. Uh, but we can finish off this map with the state of Wisconsin blue for Jimmy Carter. So the final map is 121 electoral votes for Jimmy Carter and 417 for George H.W. Bush. If you skip to the end, I did not base this off in a prediction, more of just who won a higher percentage of the vote when they won those states back in their elections. So thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I'll see you all tomorrow.